So we started with building a custom lightweight encrypted data protocol in 2013, which allowed to send messages securely over the weakest network connections. And then, for, to do that, we set up a distributed server infrastructure all over the world to uh, make sure that Telegram remains the fastest means of communication uh, everywhere on the planet. So, uh, our secret chats that we launched also in 2013 were an instant hit because they uh, provided end-to-end -end encryption and self-destruct timers, which was extremely important in the wake of Edward Snowden's revelations. But then we started to build on that. That laid the groundwork for our future development. And in uh, 2014, Telegram started to attract broader audiences. Uh, we noticed that a lot of users loved our cross-device synchronization and built-in cloud features. And more and more users started to switch uh, some of the activities uh, from email and other messaging services to Telegram. And they started to use Telegram not only to communicate with their friends and family, but also to uh, solve business tasks uh, that they've been previously doing with email, for example. So we noticed that and we added a few uh, features, uh, many features to, to facilitate that kind of use. Among them is an instant search that allows you to find any message out of millions of messages in your chat history instantly. And the other one is great laptop and tablet support, uh, Telegram, which is also pretty unique. We launched unlimited and very fast file transfer on Telegram. Uh, we supported massively large group chats with ways to bring structure in them, like replies, mentions, and hashtags. So, uh, most importantly, I think, is that we managed to do all of this without making the app more complicated. We managed to maintain the simplicity of Telegram, its ease of use. And even now, after we added so many unique features on the platform, it's still, we believe, the easiest and the simplest messaging app on the market. Uh, so, how do we add features and more options for our users? without making things more complicated for them. And the answer we found is that we should build a, a platform. We should provide open APIs to third parties to start creating specific uh, uh, apps, specific tools that would cater for uh, different needs of our audience, of our users. And uh, Telegram was always, it has been the, an open platform from the beginning in 2013. It's probably the only massively popular messaging app which API is 100% open and free. But in 2015, last year, we went further. We opened Bot Platform. And Bot Platform allowed third parties to create bots, small apps within Telegram, this natural UI which everybody loves and knows, you, the UI of a, a messaging app. And um, uh, since then, uh, a lot of uh, like thousands of developers have been leveraged the uh, social graph of Telegram. It, uh, in many ways, revolutionized the way users and businesses could communicate on Telegram. Uh, bots can... Uh, uh, solve a variety, a wide variety of tasks from uh, gaming and dating to uh, customized new services and uh, uh, integrating third party applications. Uh, so we were excited by that. And uh, uh, the question you're probably asking yourself what, what, what about today? Uh, how large is this platform that third party? parties could leverage. Uh, so I'm extremely proud to announce today that we uh, have reached 100 million active users on Telegram. And that was a 
significant increase from uh, last year when we announced 62 million users in May. Uh, so, uh, the great thing is every day 350,000 uh, uh, new users sign up for Telegram. And we're extremely proud and happy that all of this growth is 100% organic. So we have a zero marketing budget and uh, uh, we don't spend any resources on buying ads to promote Telegram or any other kind of user acquisition. It, it's basically people recommend their friends and colleagues to start using Telegram as a more efficient and reliable communication tool. 